As the world moves towards electrification, there's a huge demand for copper. For multi-decades going forward, we're now going to be in an increasing copper demand market. Everyone wants to do the right thing, and mining's a bad thing, so people do not want mines built. As a result of that, you have this major deficit of copper. New projects, new deposits, new mines need to come on stream in order to satisfy that demand. If there are no new copper mines coming on stream and no major discoveries made, then we're in a serious deficit and we have a serious problem on our hands. Our project's located in the best copper hunting ground in the planet. This is not an area where you find a multi-million ton copper deposit. This is an area where you find a billion ton copper deposit. The geophysics, the geochemistry, the discovery drilling, we've done 10 years of preparatory work to be successful today. If you had the foresight to look at this asset with a view to 10 years down the road and could say, if copper demand increases, copper price rises, this could be one of the top assets in the world to have. Our neighbors are big, successful mines. This is the one that got away from the seniors, but it never quite gets away from the seniors. They're gonna own it eventually. It just means it costs them more money to get it. Midnight Sun is an exploration staged company. We have a large land package in one of the top jurisdictions in the world and we're surrounded by major mining companies and top tier producers. We have always been in the philosophy that we're explorers. It's a different skill set to become producers. We own the Sawazi licenses in Zambia. Our intent would be to sell it to a major mining company that would develop it. Top area for us is a place called Dumbwa. We have an area called Me Too that's another highly prospective region. We have Crunch, which is a zone a little further to the north. And then we have something called Kaziba or the 22 zone. This is not a property that was left orphaned because nobody wanted it. The Zambian government was very unhappy with the senior copper producers. They owned all the exploration ground in the country and were doing no exploration. They developed a policy of use it or lose it. They forced these senior companies to drop half of their licenses. And so we took advantage of that and we managed to option this project at a time when copper prices were very low. Market interest in Zambia, market interest in Africa, market interest in copper and cobalt in particular just wasn't there. We're developing that property towards an asset that would be sellable to a major mining company. There's a Zambian Congo copper belt. There's an area called the Domes region. And of course, our project is located right smack in the heart of the Domes region of Zambia, which is home to the highest grade deposits in the country. We have analogous deposits in the neighborhood. We have the 22 zone, which is analogous to Kasanchi. We have Dumbwa, which is analogous to Lumwana, which is Barracks Mine, 50 kilometers to the west of us. We have Mitu, which is analogous to First Quantum Sentinel Mine, which is about 150 kilometers to the west. We have Ivanhoe's Kamoa Kakula deposit, which is one of the largest and richest copper deposits in the world, just north of us inside the DRC border. And we have China Molybdenum's Tenki deposit, which was sold for $4 billion a few years ago, just to the north of us as well. And so these are all huge, big mines in an area where if you put a blanket around these, it might be 150 kilometer circumference, which would gain more copper than the sum total of copper in Canada. One area in particular, which we deem our top exploration targets, an area called Dumbwa. And Dumbwa is a 20 kilometer long soil anomaly which means we've gone in there and done soil sampling and we've delineated a 20 kilometer long structure. One of the things that's most remarkable along that entire 20 kilometer structure is that we have these vegetation kill zones caused by high grade copper material that's underneath the ground, underneath that soil. And so those are a really, really strong pathfinder and a signal that there's something very large happening there and that there's some kind of large system. Zambia, where Midnight Sun is working, is one of the top jurisdictions in the world. Whenever you look for supply, you need to have the proper geology to have big mines. And Zambia has an underexplored geological environment that produces big mines. But what makes Zambia particularly appealing is that unlike other copper jurisdictions, which are typically copper porphyry deposits, Zambia is a different type of deposit. It's a much, much larger deposit, a multi-generational asset as opposed to something smaller with a shorter mine life. Um, but Zambia is also underexplored. Zambia is an elected democratic government. 
They have a proper mining act in place. They've been a mining powerhouse for over 100 years. The change of government has led to a very pro-mining stance. As long as it's understood by the mining companies that they pay their royalties, pay their taxes, and be good corporate citizens. Everybody from Rio Tinto, Barrick, First Quantum, and now a new player in the sector, Cobalt. All of these companies are making their home in Zambia because it's an easy jurisdiction, it's a friendly jurisdiction, and most importantly, it's a geologically prospective jurisdiction. We have an absolutely vast project. This is 506 square kilometers of ground, top-notch ground located in probably the best spot we could possibly be. We're right in the heart of the Zambian Congo Copper Belt, right in the heart of the Domes region, which is home to the largest and highest grade deposits in Zambia and some of the biggest in the world. We feel comfortably that there's three target areas on the license that can meet that billion ton criteria. We've got cobalt in the mix. We got some nickel, there's some gold. There's four, five different spots on this license that could create a generational mine. In terms of quality and in terms of grade, if you look at the area surrounding our Solwezi project, and when you look at the grade that's an average mineable grade in the area, you're typically between 0.5 and 0.65%. In the case of Midnight Sun, what we've been finding so far is vastly higher than that. We've been looking at material in our drill intercepts that's anywhere from you know 1% up to six and six and a half percent copper. The next two or three years are going to be critical in the life of Midnight Sun. We believe we're going to make a critical deposit discovery. We need to move this project forward in a way that gives our shareholders the biggest potential upside, that allows us to maintain our share structure, but to move these assets forward and leave as much blue sky as possible. We've cut a deal with Cobol. They're going to spend around 15 million US to earn a majority ownership of this project. But what that gains us is a couple of really critical things. Number one, now we're gonna develop Dumbwa. We're gonna see what the real potential of Dumbwa is, and we're gonna find out what that system actually has. What it also gets us is a partner backed by world-class technology investors, including Breakthrough Energy Ventures, founded and chaired by Bill Gates, and Silicon Valley venture capital firm, Anderson Horowitz, as well as institutional investors such as T. Rowe Price and the Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board. This is a company that is poised to be a serious player in critical metals, and so we're really proud to have them on board. And the stamp of approval that they put on this project by putting their money behind it is incredible. What it also does now is leaves the rest of the concession, two-thirds of the concession is wide open to new geological theories and testing and excitement because of the success we'll have at Dumbwa. We've now left Me Too, Crunch, and Kaziba with all kinds of opportunity for our shareholders now that we have a strategic joint venture on Dumbwa, so we could have four separate multi-generational systems in development at the same time. The drilling results at Dumbwa will put a value on that asset and you can extrapolate that through to the Midnight Sun share price. We hope that Me Too, Crunch and Kaziba have that exact same potential. And now our end game becomes developing this project, which is vast. This is multiple opportunities for a big discovery. Everybody should have a magic list of ingredients that they're looking for in the ultimate project. Grade, geology, scalability, and jurisdiction. We have a 500 square kilometer project located right smack in the heart of one of the top copper jurisdictions in the world. Our project's located in the best copper hunting ground in the planet, we believe. Multiple world-class mining companies completely surrounding us. Our neighbors are big, successful mines, and we believe we host more than one of those on our ground. This is not an area where you find a multi-million ton copper deposit. This is an area where you find a billion ton copper deposit. We have a very clear goal in both finding a multi-generational asset and then developing that multi-generational asset to the point that it is appealing to a major mining company. We think we're close to solving the riddle of Solwezi. At the point that we're ready, we will put this target up for sale.